and welcome back to the 2022 Itamitsu Asia Talent Cup. One of the most successful and biggest paths on the road to MotoGP, helping young riders from across Asia and Oceania follow their dream and head into the MotoGP paddock, which is who we're racing alongside this weekend. And as you can see, there were some thrills and a few spills yesterday in race one here at Buriram, but riders all okay and ready to head out to do battle once more on Sunday morning. The conditions have changed a little bit. It was glorious sunshine yesterday, but it's a little bit damp as we head into the second contest of the weekend. And we will have another, I'm sure, classic ATC showdown with four breakaways at the front yesterday and the whole grid ready to try and fight it out once again for those 25 points. And Shinya Azawa looking for a comeback as well. The number 21 on the back foot on Saturday. What can he do on Sunday? And will we see that flag out once again as we get underway at Buriram? So good morning and welcome back to Chang International Circuit here in Thailand in Buriram, north and east of the capital city of Bangkok. And as you can see, partly cloudy. I think that's a little bit of an understatement, although it does look brighter now. We've got the full shot, doesn't it? Compared to when we headed upstairs right to the top of that commentary, that commentary box. I wish that was the commentary box. Right to the top of that main grandstand to our commentary position with a glorious view of this lovely, lovely circuit. I am Fran Wild and along Alongside me is Elliot York, as yesterday. And uh, yeah, we will see what we have in store on Sunday. But definitely a different challenge for the field now with uh, a damp track out there. Yeah, interesting conditions to say the least. The riders, I think they're on about the third sort of sighting lap. I think they've been allowed to go around a few times just to get used to these conditions because it was raining all morning. Not very hard, but it was drizzling when I woke up this morning and it's probably stopped about half an hour ago would you say maybe even less something like that yeah it was not raining when i was in my vehicle on the way here okay, so yeah. that's probably about yeah 45 minutes ago yeah um finally managed to make it through uh, <laughs> <laughs> the traffic into the track so yeah it has held off for a little while now but it's still a pretty damp the other interesting thing of course here is that it's still very warm um, so that's, uh, yeah, very different to if we were having a British GP Sunday morning <laughs> damp session at the moment. But, uh, yeah, we'll have to see, won't we? Because it can really put a spanner in the works of those who were super quick yesterday in the dry. And also an extra challenge for those with a little bit less experience. That is one of the riders on screen with a... a bit more experience in the field Carter Thompson he's on pole just missed out on the podium yesterday and just getting a few last minute tips there from Alberto Putsch who is team manager of the Repsol Honda team and of course a key part of the road to MotoGP having been involved for uh, well more than a decade now even maybe even two yeah very wise man to have by his side isn't it for Carter Thompson I think they were just discussing the sort of conditions and maybe a switch to slicks but by the looks of things they are on wet tyres and I think they are going to start on wet tyres it does look to me there is still plenty of damp patches around the circuit um, but it is going to be interesting to see how quickly it does dry up because we've seen across the classes this weekend especially on Friday when we did have a slight downpour I think it was before Moto3 FP2 is there such a thing it as a slight really downpour quick. Is that, does that exist in Thailand? Um, for Thailand, I think it was a slight downpour. <laughs> but yeah, it did dry very quickly, like you were saying, by uh, ribbing aside. Uh, so yeah, it will be an interesting one, won't it? Especially if they do start on wets when it's marginal and we don't get any more water coming down. Certainly one to think about, maybe seek out those damp patches, cool that tyre down. But uh, yeah, it's, we often see a few riders be able to really bring their pace up late in the race once they get in the rhythm as well in the ATC. Yesterday, that second group couldn't get back in touch with the first, but we did see Veda Ega Pratama in Mategi, especially coming through right from the back and bridging those gaps. So we'll have to see how that is affected with the, these very different track conditions. 
yeah, it's going to be a different race, I feel, to yesterday. Obviously, yesterday was fully dry. The riders have ridden in pretty much full dry conditions all weekend, so they're used to it. I think the opening few laps are going to be quite tensive, and the riders are going to be, need to be quite cautious. We saw a dramatic, dramatic opening lap yesterday. Um, Adaki going down at turn three, which caused the former title leader, Shinya Azawa, to take avoiding action, and he could only manage P6, so he did relinquish the title lead yesterday to Ooh, Hakim nice Denise, word. who That's was... a uh, big word for Sunday morning. Yeah, I've, I've had a coffee, so <laughs> I'm on form. Um, Hakim Denise has won three races in the last four, so he really is starting to assert his dominance, yeah. and yesterday was a classy victory, wasn't it? It was, certainly, yeah. It was well thought out from the Malaysian. We thought he was kind of waiting it out there at the back of the group of four that was fighting for the win and uh, it had a few uh, more adventurous laps but then in the last few really head down and yeah judged that final corner perfectly did the Malaysian um, and we also saw Hiroshi Ayama down on the grid so there's some uh, real VIPs down there giving some advice uh, and that was the aforementioned Veda Ega Pratama who had a grid penalty on Mategi and still absolutely sliced through the field to impress and yesterday also took a very good finish as well and uh, just missed out on that win by how many hundredths was it? Almost none. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, really impressive stuff from the Indonesian now he's back from injury. And then we have Eamon Adaki. So, as you said, Elliot, did crash out early on yesterday. But as you can see, wins one, podiums two, poles two. It's been quite a uh, blockbuster start to his ATC career. And I'm sure just being a little bit off that front group on home turf last time out and then here at Bury Ram struggling a little bit more, I'm sure he will want to really move forward again before we head into Sepang in the last few races. Yeah, certainly. Yesterday's crash was... Um, a little bit unfortunate for him. He was a bit too eager on the throttle, wasn't he, coming out of turn three? So he won't be making the same mistake again. I'm sure he will not. So let's have a look at this grid then here for race two. Same as race one. We've got Carter Thompson, Australian on pole from Hakeem Danish, the points leader, and Gun Mie looking to still make some progress in the standings. Pratama, Adaki, and Rizwante there on row two, ahead of Izawa looking to bounce back. Lakhan, home hero, and Nicholas, who had a good race yesterday as well. Hamad Al Sahuti looking for a little bit more after he's shown podium form elsewhere. Ahead of Puetisan, another home hero, and Leonglio. Then we've got Ray Cat Fadilla, Hafi, Trihardika, Putra, One Moon, another home hero joining the fold this weekend. Swain, Iztar, Sukum, Quintal, and Tran Duk Tai bringing up the rear there, the Vietnamese rider looking for a little more track time to bring down that gap. So we're all ready, and yes, we've definitely got wets on there. So. Let's see what they make of it then, heading out for one more brief look at this Bury Ram circuit before we line up and uh, full gas it into the first corner. Yeah, I'm just looking at um, the weather forecast. I was going to say, I know you're doing something. I am doing something, yeah. We do have a heavy rain warning and it's sort of 9% for the next couple of hours. Drops to 80-70% after that, um, but weather forecasts are quite a lottery here aren't they? I was going to say I weekend, also so see the app the particular app yes, that you're using which has sometimes led me astray <laughs> <laughs> but yes so definitely you can feel it in the air as well today can't you like yeah. you could as well throughout the afternoon yesterday but there weren't too many clouds but that humidity just ramping up and up and up and then finally just as I was leaving last night about eight or nine ish it just went yeah. and it all came down at once so hopefully it'll hold off enough for these guys to uh to get a good race under their belts without too many changes in the conditions and just see the track dry up as we head around for these 16 laps for race two on Sunday. So you can see 31 degrees, ground temperature, 24 air, feels like 50 for those of <laughs> us who aren't used to humidity. But uh, yeah, it does look quite dry, doesn't it? It really yeah. does. I'm just peering out the comments box window. We can see quite a lot of the circuit here. We've got a good view of sort of turn five through six. It does look pretty dry. It's hard to tell on the front straight whether it looks dry or not, but there's certainly some areas of this track that do look dry from our vantage point. Difficult to obviously tell you exactly because we're obviously not out there riding these bikes, but I think definitely the right decision to start on wet tyres. It's going to be interesting to see how quickly that changes. It really will, yeah. It'll be a uh, speedway in by the final lap, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, like you said, you can see that dry line 
especially through the kind of middle part of the track. But it does look wetter into the final corner where they're coming through now and on the main straight just below us. Um, and here at Bury Ram, like Mandalika, the tarmac's very dark, so it's hard to tell. But here at Bury Ram, you will definitely see that dry line emerging as it dries out. Here we go then. Let's just hope for a uh, drama-free turn one, given the slightly more difficult conditions as they head in there. Carter Thompson looking pretty focused there. I'm sure he'll want a podium for his troubles today. And uh, lines up on pole, and we're ready to get underway. Okay, so we've got the green flag at the back now, uh, replacing the yellow. The guy with the red flag moves off the front of the grid. The lights will come on. And then we'll be racing once again here on Sunday. And it looks like a good start from Thompson this time around. A little bit better than race one. But I don't think he's going to get the whole shot because Hakeem Danish once again almost pushing himself off the middle of the front row. The number 13 then into the lead early on. But will Carter Thompson strike back as soon as possible? Looks like the number six is heading past. Slipstream sticky then down from turn one into turn three. This is where we saw early drama yesterday. Hopefully nothing comes of it this time around. Just looking at the number 20. The former title leader, Shinya Azawa, he's in the middle of the pack there, just about where he was yesterday on the outside there, going around turn three. Looks like they're all going to progress safely through turn three this time around, so that's good going. It is indeed. So it's Gunmie, then the number five, who's taken over in the lead. Good stuff from him, drama free start. And Thompson and Danish then losing out a little bit compared to their initial jump off the line and launch through turn one. But at the moment, it's very, very close. Normally, we've seen a little bit more of a break away from the front few, or we've Oof. got someone going off into the green and over the runoff there. Not exactly sure who that was, but we'll uh, try and get an update. All OK at the moment, though, and now you can see that second group just looking a little bit more nervous and Gunmie, Thompson and Danish then starting to break away at the front. Azawa down eighth place at the minute, so a decent enough start, but he needs to start making progress quickly because the top three are already breaking clear. It's going to be interesting how tie degradation goes in this race. You've got to be careful. The riders at the front are clearly feeling pretty confident to push in these early stages, and the wet tyres are providing them some nice grip. But as you can see there, it looked pretty dry already, and dry surface and wet tyres do not make a good match. No, they certainly don't. It's, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one, this one. We've still got 16 laps to go, or well, 15 and one little squirt to the line now as they're coming around that final corner. But yeah, Gunmie then at the moment looking really confident in the race lead, the number five. No troubles for him whatsoever. And Thompson and Danish still slotted in behind there. And then you can see the number 14 then is Eamon Adaki who's managed to make his way through to the front of this chasing group. So some better stuff from the Japanese rookie on Sunday so far. You could see on the front straight there that it was still pretty wet. No real spray coming off the tyres, but you can see the lines being left on the surface, which does mean it is still quite damp. It looks quite damp down this straight as well. So there's definitely places on this circuit where it's still pretty sketchy, mixed with the dry conditions. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Just keep an eye on the rider second in the championship, Azawa. He crossed the line in 10th place, so he's dropped a couple of positions on that opening lap as the number 21. And there you can see right on cue. Thank you, director. There is the number 21. So looking for a little bit more today then, although there are a few races still to go in this season, like we said yesterday today. Quartararo leads the MotoGP World Championship because he's taking eighth if he has to take eighth rather than crashing out. So definitely it's not all lost for Ezawa after a really good season so far but Buriram a more difficult weekend for him and Adaki so far. Let's see what they've got then as the laps tick down and as those laps do tick down we can also see Mie and Thompson then really starting to stretch their legs at the front. Yeah, me and Thompson, of course, winless so far in 2022, despite their good form. They've had a bit of luckless times in 2022 as well so far. Carl Thompson missing the podium um, by pretty much nothing yesterday. He's only two tenths off the win and finished fourth place. Unfortunately, one of them had to finish fourth in that group of four. Um, but yeah, me and Thompson then going for it in these early stages. And it all came down to this last corner, didn't it? Carter Thompson pulls up on the inside of me. Is he going to take the lead early on in this race? No, thinks a little He's bit better not, of it. Might be a good tactic at this yeah, stage. Yeah, these two do need to be a little bit careful, although Gunmie was the... Uh 
party judged guilty for their contact at Mategi, but they already do have, well, they did have a second in hand over Danish before, uh, yeah, the latter couple of corners of that lap, and the Malaysian has reeled them in again a little bit, but if Thompson is going to attack, he wants to make sure it doesn't start a duel that will just bring them back into that fight with those on the chase. But uh, at the moment then, Danish still holding strong in third place, and uh, you can see he's just bridging that gap and getting back on terms with those two guys in the lead. Is Thompson going to go for it? No, look tempted, but not quite. So, oh, Adaki quite mm -hmm. wide there then. So just for reference, the fastest lap yesterday was set by Marianos Nicholas of 47.9. So we're some way off that, as expected. Um, yeah, about six seconds off that so far. So Incredible maths there. So thank quick. you very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the best at maths, but I quickly worked that out. Um, yeah, 147.9 yesterday, obviously not near that so far, as expected. Um, but you'd normally think if it was full wet would be a lot more off the pace so. yeah for sure so it's yeah you can definitely see that dry line around where they're going now you can see the track on the tv is like you can see the heat haze as well from that camera angle yeah. a little bit it's still very very hot out there although yeah i think the 24 degrees air temperature did us dirty on the graphic earlier i can't believe it i can't be that weak <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's still very, very warm. So it will be drying pretty quickly, but it's definitely into the final corner. You can really see all down sort of the side of the track under the advertising hoarding into that final corner and then onto the main straight. Definitely still pretty damp. It's just starting to bunch up a little bit, isn't it? Denise set the fastest lap before um, the other rider there, Fuetizara, set the fastest lap, Fuetizan, sorry, uh, the tie rider, of course, hoping to get onto a home Grand Prix podium in front of the home fans. There's a few of them who have flocked in early doors to see the second race of the Asia Talent Cup. Fatama then setting the fastest lap at 1.53.2. So the times are tumbling, which is they to be are, expected. Yeah. And the, the gap at the front is closing down. You can see Thompson and Mie did have a little bit of a, a gap to play with, but Denise has dragged Fatama with him. Fatama setting the fastest lap of the race there. And they're pretty much now with the two leaders. Yeah, you can now see this lead group is more of a quintet rather than a duo. And then a little bit bigger gap back to, I think it's Lone Cleo at the front of the second group now then. So Adaki after heading a little bit wide here um, uh, one lap ago has just lost a little bit of ground the Japanese rookie so he'll want to oh and he's fighting it out with Azawa as well so there we go I was going to say he'll want to stay ahead of his compatriot he's looking for yeah, some bigger points on Sunday but they're in their own little battle then in that second group at the moment with a home hero at the head of it no less Fatama up to second then into turn four one of the fastest corners if not the fastest on the circuit Azawa making steady but good progress in the early stage after dropping down to 10th place. He's back up into 8th place. That camera angle gave me a small heart attack <laughs> there. <laughs> but no, no harm done then. But Danish then is now down into 4th place. So, oh, what are we going to get a replay of? Looks like a, a Someone's puncture. heading into the pits, yes. Not sure. OK, oh, it's Hamad Al-Sahuti then. Mm. So it's a Qatari rider, the number 23, taking a big step forward this year. Been on the podium a few times, but a uh, bit of a luckless Sunday then. Not sure what's happened to him, but uh, hopefully nothing too dramatic. And just sadly, one of those things. And he'll be back out again at Sepang. Well then, this front group, you can see now, is kind of a freight train. There's not too big a gap anywhere when we've got so many bikes in that lead group punching that hole in the air. And it's Lone Cleo who's just trying to get back on terms with those five ahead of him now because Puerto San has made some really good progress. The number 20 there in the middle of the screen. And he's pretty much with the four guys who fought it out for the podium yesterday now is the tie rider. So definitely a lot on the line on home turf. Certainly is. Patama a good half a second faster than anyone else on circuit. Fuetizan was also in the 153s. So was Lunglio. Um, but that's about it in the top group. Carter Thompson also in the 153s, but 153.9. So a good half a second down on Patama's pace. So Patama showing really, really good speeds in these early stages. He's now got to the front. It's going to be interesting to see what he does. Will he try and clear off? 
Um, but they've got to box clever here because there's a long way to go, 12 laps to go on a drying track on wet tyres that aren't going to get any grippier. So it's going to be interesting now for Thomas at the front to see what he can do. And you can see there's a lot of riders in the postcode right behind this leading group. So if they do hold each other up, it's going to immediately be a really, really big gaggle right on their tail. So, um, yeah, let's see. We've still got 11 and a bit to go. So we've got plenty time here. It's only drying out at the moment. We've had no further rain. We've not seen any rain flags to uh, tell us otherwise either. And from where we're sat as well, the condensation's getting better better which is proof in itself so yeah this is going to i don't know what are we going to see at the end of this race with wet tires the same guys at the moment are the fastest on track but uh, yeah in 10 laps time who's going to have that grip left to be able to fight this out for the podium very good question the million dollar question we're not sure at this stage it all came down to turn 12 yesterday hacking denise there in the lead group like he was yesterday but i feel like at this stage of the race the riders probably want a little bit of rain just to make their lives a little bit easier of course the front straight is still a little bit damp but there's no spray coming off the surface anymore um, so it can't be that wet and they're just going to be losing grip constantly and fighting to stay on the bike really as the number 14 of Adaki runs wide there at turn one the japanese rider yeah exactly so if you are on wets on a drying track you want more rain as soon as possible yeah and then past a certain point you want no more rain <laughs> uh, so yeah we'll we'll see what happens then whether holding strong for the moment but yeah like you said idaki ran wide again there a little bit so he'll need to watch that because he will start to get track limits warnings as we saw come up for tanat long plio the uh, thai rider who's uh, now just a little bit off the front of that second group but uh, yeah, if you if you go over onto the green a few too many times, you will get a track limits warning, and eventually you may get a long lap penalty, or the equivalent time, of course. <laughs> so back at the front then, I thought we were starting to see Pratama just stretch away in the lead, especially last time they came past us and our commentary position. The number seven had a little bit of time in hand, and he is quite a light rider, so he doesn't lose out too much on the straight compared to others. But no, they are right back on him and uh, looking pretty eager to get past as well. It's Gun Mie then who's looking for a way through on the Indonesian at the moment. And then, uh, yeah, our usual suspects from race one, but now joined by Twitter-san looking for that home glory. Azawa now leading the chase, 1.6 seconds out on this lead group. He's got them in his sights, but 1.6 seconds in these sort of conditions is a long way to bridge, and he's got company in the form of Rizwanto there. He's going up the insides at the final corner. Thought a little bit better of it as Gunmie then retakes the lead from Patama. So we're not seeing Patama stretch away, I think, they probably realised that there's no point pushing in these early stages or pushing too much to try and break clear because you're going to have no tie left at the end of the race, especially if it doesn't rain. And if it does rain, if we do get a bit of wet weather sprinkling, then you want some um, tie left at the end of the race so you can push. Yeah, you definitely do. So. I don't know, they're all looking like it's the penultimate lap already, aren't they, at the moment? But uh, Gunmie then decided to uh, take that race lead back. Thompson now following him through as well. Danish, though, Ooh. going for, uh, what's that, three in one? <laughs> what a move then from the Malaysian, and he does get it done as well. Not too dramatic either. So really nice stuff from the number Oi. 13 to take back the lead, and Thompson bit wide there, a bit of uh, extra dirt track practice, but all okay for the number six, and slots back into the group. So Danish then does he decided he's got it what it takes to uh, <laughs> push at the front and break away if he does think that already the uh, best laid plans have uh, gone awry slightly yeah and all this to in and fro in is allowing the riders behind azawa to catch up i think he's closed in about half a second in the last lap or so so this is music to the ears lighting up the eyes of azawa the number 20 rom rider because he needs a good result here to um, claw back the deficit he's lost to Hakim Denise. 11 points now he falls behind Hakim Denise in the overall standings and we saw a few laps ago Hamed al Saouti, um have to exit or en enter pit lane sorry with a with a flat tire <laughs> have to he exit was, pit lane <laughs> he was um, third in the overall standing so that's a disaster for the Qatari rider yeah, it is indeed. It could be an expensive day in the championship standings for Hamad al Sahuti. But let's wait and see, because anything can still happen. And he does have a, a few points in hand over Gunmie and then Eamon Adaki. And then there's a bigger gap back to Pratama, who obviously missed his home round at Mandalika through injury as well. So he's also had his place in the uh, championship dented a little bit by some bad luck. 
But uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one, this is, because we now have, I would say, a freight train rather than two groups. Absolutely, yeah. A few fastest laps coming in, the, the best of them for D there, just popping up the screen, a 153.1. The only riders in the front group that were in the 153s were Mie and Pratama, and they were 153.9. So best part, the second clawed back then for the riders just behind. As I were in that group, we've mentioned him plenty of times this race. He is second in the overall standings and now has his main rival, Denis, right in front of him there. Yep, exactly. So you saw, I think that was Poitisan going off a little bit wide there, but no harm done for the number 20 and back in the group. But shout out to... Uh, to recap for Diller, actually, one of a few riders who scored in every race. From what I'm looking at, I can only see that there's four of them, and the other three were the top three in the standings. So uh, now Hamad Al Sahuti is going to lose that honour for sure. So it might be one of only three to have uh, taken some good points in each race so far this year, the Indonesian. So some good stuff from him. Nine laps to go. There's still so much we don't know about how this is going to go down. If it was in the drive, like, OK, we're going to have this big group fight, then maybe in the last few laps, you know, a few guys who showed their pace yesterday might just have that edge. But we still have no idea what's going to happen. And uh, Veda Ega Pratama definitely extremely keen to make sure that he is in the driving seat at the moment then, really pushing on. And you can see that gap nearly half a second ahead of Mie and Thompson now. Top two of the title chase there in your picture. Azawa has latched himself onto the back of Denise. Thought about a move at the final corner, but with eight laps to go, there's plenty of time left to make a move in this race. As Pratama then, wow, 152.5. He really has got the hammer down. There's the number seven, the first 152 of the race, and it's a mid-157 as well. No one else in that league group was in the 152s. A 153.3 for Gunmie, 153.1 for Carter Thompson, as always the next quickest of 153.0. So Pratama half a second a lap faster than anyone else at this stage. And you can see that by the gap he's pulled. Yeah, he really has, hasn't he, the number seven. Also, I love the fact he's, the second time around there, you said a 157. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is, uh, yeah, no, that was really good stuff from the number seven then. Can see exactly where it came from. The Indonesian looking pretty comfortable as well. It doesn't look like it's... Uh, you know, there's not too many risks, no wobbles. We've not seen any moments from him at all. And uh, that gap then just growing at the moment. And it's Thompson and Mie on the chase. And it's the Australian in second at the moment. And then another classic Ooh. group battle. Wow, Azawa looked really eager to try that, didn't he? And I think Denise is a little bit wide through there as well. But uh, yeah, the number 21 then homing in on his prey and his key rival in the standings as it stands. We've got a good old-fashioned seat tap from um, Azawa there when he just got ahead of Denise, but Denise, using the slipstream, just pulled straight past, not listening to his main title rival. <laughs> you, you can understand that as yeah. well. We see it so often in the, the talent cups and in the lower class, don't we? Sort of stick behind me, mate. I've got some pace, um, but it's never really I don't remember to, anyone ever really. The only time I remember people doing that, and it wasn't even from a seat tap, it was just like a wise decision, was following Pedro Acosta from the pit lane in Doha. Yeah. When it was just like, okay, fair enough. Like, <laughs> anyone who could stay with him, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quite an obvious kind of leader of the pack on that comeback mission there. But yeah, it's, uh, it's always fun to see the optimism though even if it never quite pays off but at the moment though it's really paying off this push for Veda Ega Pratama in the lead it's now well over a second and uh, the Indonesian looking comfortable like we said as well it doesn't really look like he's uh, pushing visually it's just those lap times keep coming in and that gap keeps growing but Thompson did put in the fastest lap that time around it was just a tenth just a tenth of a second faster than Pratama, but that's enough if he does it a few times to uh, start to get back on terms with the Indonesian. But uh, we'll have to see as well what good Mie does. If he doesn't think he can go with Thompson, maybe he'll try and get past him, hold him up and uh, make sure he can at least fight for second. Another seat up then from Azawa, but using the slipstream, Immediately Denise has just pulled straight out and overtaken him and he's going to lose two in one there is Azawa. So yeah, the seat's up not really working for him. You can understand why because you can see, well, especially for Tama, pulling clear. He's already pulled in nearly two tenths of a second. Yeah, in the he's open really sector. going, isn't he? He's really going. The hammer is down. And uh, as we saw then on your screens as well, we've got a long lap penalty due to exceeding track limits, which I also did there and hit the desk. Um, and the tie rider, unfortunately, then that's going to be frustrating. 
frustrating on home turf but still some good pace and a good race from the number 11 but now in ninth place then and off this group we'll have to see where he'll come back out on track once he's done that long lap a few of the riders there running onto the green paint you don't want to be doing that all too often because you are going to get a track limits warning if you do it too much we've you're going seen to get it. exactly that yep yeah, that yeah, long lap penalty a may come your way the long lap penalty loop incidentally is on the outside of turn five so we'll obviously keep you updated on that if we get any track limits warnings they'll pop up on our time screens and we will let you know but yeah the uh Katama then sets another fastest lap of the race a 151.7 it extends his lead to 1.8 seconds now over carter thompson so really has put the hammer down as Katama but with six laps to go has he gone too early we're going to find out very soon. I think we are going to find out very soon. I'm not sure, you know. I think another five after this one. That's not too much to ask. We'll have to see because as well, he's been in a similar postcode throughout this race as the two riders chasing him down as well. Thompson and Mie may not have been pushing on at the front for the last couple of laps, but they've all been uh, around each other on track pulling similar moves. So you'd expect maybe to find themselves in similar situations as we head into the last few laps. I think this is just going to be a pretty replay. Mm -hmm. Down into the final corner, hard on the anchors, turn 12. We'll be hoping he's got a clean run into there in a few laps time, Will Pratama. So we are getting some track limits warning for Anne Fuetizan, the number 20. Has got a track limits warning, he's in the second group, down in eighth place at this moment in time. That's a nice end to that slow-mo, wasn't it? Just <laughs> lovely stuff then from the number seven. And you can see now it's really, really pulled out that gap out the front. And then this group then fighting it out for what is now, what, fourth place with Hakeem Danish in it as well. So potentially, potentially a real chance for those ahead to capitalize a little bit as the Malaysian, I think, hit the green there as well. Um, so he'll have to be careful as well. But yeah, it looks like then our points leader may end this race off the podium. And uh, like Elliot said a couple of minutes ago, it's uh, Puerto San, who's the next to get a track limits warning and another home hero. So <laughs> need to be careful, keep it within the uh, track limits so he doesn't get a long lap penalty. Because at the moment, there's plenty to play for here, a place in the top four. Just going to see the gap over the line between Gun Mie in third place and Hakim, Hakim Denish in fourth place. It's 2.5 seconds and it is growing. They lost over a second there to Gun Mie. Gun Mie 152.3, just slightly quicker than Carter Thompson. Incidentally, Fatama still in the 151. So Fatama really has superior pace at this stage of the race. But this group here, also with all the battling they're doing, lost over a second that time around. So the podium hopes for these guys are quickly fading. And, uh, yeah, the main thing for now is Azara and Denise, obviously, the number 21 and 13, top two in the championship. This is the battle. It is indeed. So, yeah, plenty at stake for these guys then. At least Azawa, if he's not going to be able to get back on the podium, he's... <laughs> Excuse me. He's definitely want to, going to want to end this race ahead of Hakeem Danish. As we said, it's 11 points at the moment. Azawa went into race one with the lead and then relinquished that after a tougher time on Saturday and some avoiding action early on as well that dented his place on track. But the number 21 not quite had the pace of a few of those just ahead this weekend at Buriram. But uh, we do still have a few races to go, so all is far from lost. And he is a rookie as well, we should also point out, which is uh, impressive in itself, him and Eamon Adaki, the debuts they've made this season. But these guys then, hopefully no Mategi memories coming back <laughs> in this battle. But uh, Gunmie then has struck and taken over in second place. I don't think, I mean, unless... I think Pratama's racing himself now, to be honest. Yeah. Unless there's something like rain or some really big drama or he makes his own mistake, I really don't think there's anything this duo can do about it now because it really is significant. It's like you get enough just dip in the sound as he's gone past the finish line before anyone else appears. It's yeah. a really quite a significant gap then. Really impressive stuff from the number seven in the race lead. And you can see there the graphic briefly on screen, that lap comparison. He's still putting them in, those 151s. And it's not 151.9s either, it's 151.6, 151.7. It's a really significant difference. So good stuff from him. I think these guys then maybe have decided this is a dual for second place. Yeah, outstanding pace out front from Pratama. He'll have seen his pit board, or hopefully seen his pit board anyway in the team, giving him at least sort of 3.5 seconds advantage. So now with four laps to go, 
he can hopefully just drop the pace a little bit, settle down, try to preserve some time because it's still going to be interesting to see how much tyre they do lose, but he's built up such a gap now that I don't think it's really going to matter because they're all in a similar situation now towards the end of this race. Pratama just pulled the pin. Four seconds now, the gap up front to the chasing duo of Mie and Carter Thompson. This is going to go right down to the wire, I think, between these two. Both, well, Mie stood on the podium yesterday, so he'll be wanting to stand on the podium again. But, but Carter Thompson, Thompson wants missed that. Out. Yeah, he wants his podium in the ATC. He's had the pace for one so many times. Uh, and then a bit of bad luck, bit of trouble, and uh, just not quite paid off for the number six. So let's see, is today the day? But uh, yeah, it's now, like you said, four seconds. That's over a second a lap now that Platama can afford to lose, um, even if it's, yeah, some absolute cliff that he hits with the rubber in these late stages. I really don't think there's anything that they can do about it. So the number seven then trying to cruise home to victory. Can he get it done? And who is going to come out on top in this battle? We can see at the moment there's no change at the final corner with Mia and Thompson, but these guys still line astern. But Azawa, he's had the, the lead of this little group for a, a few corners now and just has a little bit of daylight. What can Tanish do about it? He's took the lead a few times down at turn three, hasn't he, um, Azawa? And then the guys behind, including Denish, um, has been able to just use the slipstream and get back ahead of him straight away. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can try and break the slipstream slightly. Of course, that's what he's trying to do by pulling over to the right-hand side of the track, but it's Denish's title rival tucked up right behind him. So what's going to happen down into turn three? Here's Eamon Adaki then. Something's happened there then. Yeah, he's dropped right down to P14. We saw him run wide at turn one a few laps ago, didn't we? We did. Um, Have we, yeah, we've, we've missed out on something on a Ducky watch. So uh, we'll see. I don't know if uh, our lovely TV people have a replay um, <laughs> at some point. But yeah, so that's it's an expensive weekend in the standings then for the number 14. The other Japanese rookie who came out guns Oof. blazing in Qatar. Oh, yeah, that's pretty... I spoke too soon then, as I were not able to quite break away from these guys. And it's Dinesh who hits back then. The number 13, like we said, our championship leader as it stands. So good stuff from him to do that damage control and try and take that fourth place at least as the podium has gone with the uh, escape of Pratama and the Thompson versus Mi 8 duel. So Lone Cleo then. He had a track limits warning and he's got now a long lap penalty. Am I going crazy or has he got a second one? Yes, got a second one, I think. So uh, we'll have to see then if the tie rider sees that in time as well and is able to take that. The interesting Just had a flashback moment. <laughs> and I was like, yes, there's two on the timing screen. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing in this group, Fran, is that you can either finish fourth, which is not a bad result for Azawa or any of the riders, but in terms of the title chase is what I'm talking about. Azara or Denise finishing fourth isn't a bad job considering uh, the race that they're having, but you could also, if something goes wrong, you could finish down in eighth or even worse, yeah, especially exactly. in that group. So there's it's plenty the of points on offer there. There's a big difference between fourth and eighth, isn't there? So uh, we will have to see who is able to get the job done and do some damage control then, because both Azawa and Anish are definitely going to be in damage control mode to an extent now, because, yeah, Pratama then, wow, it's nearly six seconds yeah. now. He's absolutely checked out. Ciao for now. I will see you at Sapang. I'm going <laughs> to head there a little bit early. <laughs> uh, but great stuff from the number seven then. Really, really impressive performance from him. And then we still have that thompson Mie duel going strong. And then this group, I think, is where we're going to get those final lap, maybe even final corner fireworks on Sunday. I think so, yeah. Just looking at Pratama's last lap time, he is still in the 159s. A one, uh, sorry, a 150, the 151s. <laughs> I'll get it right eventually. The 151s. <laughs> a 151.9, there you can see there, just as we're speaking about it over one second faster than anyone else Carter Thompson and Mie in the 153 zeros and no one else really close to that pace at least half a second off uh, these two riders at the time were just excelling in these conditions a really really great display um, of riding here from your race leader. Yeah, absolutely. Really impressive stuff from Pratama then. And uh, yeah, we're getting into the real crunch time in Thailand, aren't we? Was that you who came up with that one yesterday? Yeah, we're really getting close then to the decider and there's this duel. Let's see what happens here. Final corner fireworks, maybe, maybe. And then that group, like you said, between fourth and eighth, there is a big difference for the likes of Azawa and Anish, who are also at the rear of that group as well now on the uh, timing screen so what have they got 
And we're on to the last lap for this duel first then. Who is going to come out on top? Is it going to be the number six of Carter Thompson, the number five of Gun Mie? And then look how close they are in that group behind as well. No move from Mie so far though. An intriguing final lap coming up and we were speaking about dropping down to the rear of this group. Denise and Azawa now are seventh and eighth. Azawa having the upper hand at this moment in time, but obviously Slipstream coming into full effect from turn one through the turn two kink down into turn three. Azawa shaping up for a move. The number 21 rider, I don't think Denise is close enough to make a move down into turn three, but Azawa's going to take three and one by the looks of things. Fantastic move. Is he going to take three and one? I think he is. So yeah. Azawa there. Incredible stuff then. Azawa knows he needs that fourth position, and now the pressure is on. It's the final lap, last chance to get that job done, and he has taken back the lead off that group, but I wouldn't be surprised if it changes again <laughs> here down into the next breaking zone. And at the moment then, in the duel just ahead, you can see the number six of Carter Thompson is still ahead there, and it is Azawa then now able to hold on at the front of this gaggle for now then. What can the number 21 do in the next few corners? Because they're really under attack oh, now. Oh, wow, what a save! What a save. Oh. Incredible stuff then. Needed to save it as well as that Fadilla, I it think, was, who yeah. pulled that off. Really impressive stuff then. It's not going to be the front of this group then for Raycat Fadilla, but still, it's going to be some good points Ooh. after that. And that will be interesting in a couple of minutes because Carter Thompson was on the green there the number six just a little bit wide and it's on the last lap remember that is when it can be it's so so vital to show you've lost out and he definitely did not Mie though looks like he's gonna try and take it regardless they're coming down into the final corner and I think we can see Gun Mie has gone for it who is gonna come out on top on the drag to the line it's gonna be Carter Thompson I think but we're gonna see what happens afterwards with that green on the last lap and this group then, Ezawa does hold on. Is he angry? Is he happy? Not quite sure. Ezawa taking that fourth place ahead of Puerto San Rizwanto. And Denise shuffled down to the back of that little group then in the end with Fadilla pulling off that stunning save. Lacan, some good points for the tie rider there. And Trihadika completing the top ten. Catch a little bit of breath. What a performance. Yeah, absolutely sensational to win by just over seven seconds. Um, that gap kept going up as well. That's oh, my favourite thing. Like on the last two laps, it's like, no, I keep going. Yeah, I'm yeah, not well, going to slack off and just uh, enjoy it. I wrongly thought that one, he might slow down after seeing um, his gap on the timing screens. But obviously, once you're in a race rhythm and feeling comfortable, what's the point in slowing down? Um, but yeah, absolutely sensational stuff to win in those circumstances. Obviously, everyone riding the same bikes here, so it's not like he's got a pace advantage in any way, shape or form. Just absolutely nailed it in the second half of that race to win by over seven seconds. Yeah, absolutely. Really did a uh, tactical masterclass then of when to push and keep it going from the number seven, as well as a good dose of talent to pull that gap out to seven seconds. Really impressive stuff from him. I'm sure feels a lot happier with that and a lot happier with the year so far as we leave Bro Ram to head for Sepang, because it's such frustration when he had to miss out on the two races on home turf through injury. And then, of course, we have such a long break before we get back in action at Mategi. And it was one Oof. race, and yet we saw it at the time. And uh, it is... There's no argument there, I don't think. No, I don't think so. It clearly did put both wheels onto the yeah. green paint. So I think we're going to see... I think we're going to see some uh, part Fermi tango yeah. here and possibly an angry Australian. Potentially, but he's still on the podium, is he? So it's a, still a very good result for Carter Thompson. Is, this, especially is that the attitude out. that brings you to success, though? <laughs> well, no, but... <laughs> you know how I brutal think... I am. <laughs> yeah, it is still, finally, that podium, which hopefully he will still enjoy and will still taste pretty sweet once potentially he's told, sorry, you did hit that green. But yeah, sorry, I'm just being rude for no reason. <laughs> Podium is a podium at the end of the day, so yeah, I know what you're saying. He will be obviously disappointed not to finish second because he is a racer and will want to finish as high as possible. Possible, But yeah, standing on the podium here in Thailand, a great result then for Carter Thompson. Gun Mie will probably finish in second place, as we've just been mentioning, Patama on the top step of the podium. And Azawa's fourth place ran really important in terms of the championship. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? So between fourth and then Denise in seventh then, that's closed up again.
And I'm sure if you told Shinya Izawa after a difficult qualifying and an even more difficult race one, that he'll actually close in quite significantly on Sunday, I think he'd be pretty happy with that. So yeah, there you go then. Sorry, rules is rules. We saw it and it was definitely clear enough for us to see with the, I don't know what the word is, naked eye, it's not quite. We do have excellent TV direction <laughs> showing us exactly what we want. But uh, yeah, it was pretty clear that, unfortunately, for the Australian. So still a podium, third place, and some good points as well. It's not just about that podium, also some points for the standings, because definitely one of the fastest in the field, but just struggling to find that traction with some bad luck. I remember a big high side as well, that uh, just every now and then, yeah, a bit of bad luck's been hitting Carter Thompson, so good to see him back. And Gunmi as well. Uh, two podiums from this round. Good uh, good stuff from the number five. Yeah, both of them bouncing back from disappointing Japanese races last time out. This was early doors in the race, sort of halfway through Pratama, bridging the gap to the leaders and then taking the lead here down into turn one, the race winning overtake. And then he just sort of pulled the race the pin winning overtake from there. about half an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> Such an impressive performance, wasn't it, from the number seven? I think, Fran, this is going to be the save on the last lap. I think from it is. Padilla. Look so at this in the go. background. Yeah. <laughs> so, trying to maybe a little bit optimistic there with the line is trying to take. But uh, great stuff then from Fadilla to keep it upright. And it does keep that record of one of now only three riders, I think, was my count, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, to with score Al in every uh, race with Al Sahiti retiring. retiring, yeah. So, uh, yeah, impressive stuff then from the Indonesian. Do you love a, a flag replay? <laughs> I'd love to get a slow mo replay of that save from the deer down at turn five. And from the rear angle as well, yeah. rather than just from the side, because I think there's quite a snap that that <laughs> camera angle not quite able to show us. Here we go then. Today's winner, Veda Ega Pratama. Incredible performance. Seven and a half clear of Gunmir and Carter Thompson. Demoted one position for track limits. Don't be confused by the smaller number next to his name. So Shinya Azawa and Puetisan Rizwante Danish in that group. Fadilla pulling off that save and still pretty close actually by the end of that uh, last lap. Able to really move in there. And Lacan taking home some solid points on home turf ahead of Trihardika completing the top 10. Then we had Putra, Leon Clio after track limits, bit a little bit for the number 11 in that race. Another disappointing, tough day out for Eamon Adaki, who wants some more to uh, write home about from Sepang. And then Marianas Nicholas, I'm sure also wanted a bit more from that, but just beating Emil Isthar to uh, that 14th place. So, yeah, Hamad Al Sahiti there, you saw one of those to not finish. So that will dent his place in the overall cup standings. And here are those overall cup standings. So now it's only seven points between Danish and Izawa at the top with Gudmie in third place and Hamad Al Sahuti shuffled down to fourth. There's 25 points for the win, moving Pratama up into fifth just ahead of Adaki and Fadilla, that consistency paying off in seventh place for him. Puetisan moving up one and Carter Thompson moving up two now, well inside the top 10 in ninth. Wakamatsu uh, down two places now and uh, Marianas Nicholas losing out as well as uh, a couple of those riders who've been behind them just uh, really gaining on Sunday from these mixed conditions and uh, another really interesting race actually definitely belonged to one rider though didn't it it certainly did yeah Pratama unbelievable in those conditions very very tricky conditions timed his move really to affection he knew he had the pace to stretch clear made the move at turn one and then didn't look back um, and yeah won by well, 7.1 seconds to Card Thompson. Good mere boon up second. He was 7.4 off the lead. And those two in turn, they also had a really, really good race. Should mention that they were over five seconds clear of the chase impact yeah, that was eventually true. led by They pulled Azawa. out their own gap, didn't they? Really impressive stuff. So I was just pointing down from our commentary position to see the little buggy bringing them <laughs> over. Because the podium here at Bury Ram is on the opposite side of the main straight to the pit building and the main grandstand, so that the main grandstand can see it. It's very cool, but yeah. it does require motorised transportation <laughs> to reach it. So uh, 
Crown stands are filling up nicely front. Obviously, everyone coming in to watch Moto 3, Moto 2, and of course, Moto GP later on. And we've had no rain, have we? Of course, if you've been we watching haven't. for the whole race, you'll, you'll know we've had no rain. But the sun is shining and the track looks pretty much dry. So. It does now, doesn't it? Yeah, you can definitely see a pretty different colour through the final corner and on the main straight now from this Buriram tarmac after it had looked a little bit soaking when we first lined up. Here we go then. So third place, Carter Thompson. He does look happy. That's always good. Gumir looks a bit happier today as well. Um, so good stuff. Should point out the flags are the wrong way around there, um, just in case you do get confused. And then we have then on the top step for the first time, really, really impressive performance from Veda Ega Pratama. And you can see he's not that much taller, even with the addition of <laughs> the uh, the top step helping him out. So congratulations to Carter Thompson, getting some payback. And congratulations to Gunmie as well. No mean feat bouncing back from a really difficult Mategi to take two more podiums. So great stuff from the number five. But as you can hear in the background, the track announcer, really what a performance from Pratama. Takes that trophy and that first race win. And then we get to enjoy the national anthem of Indonesia. Congratulations then to Veda Ega Pratama, our race winner today from Indonesia. Reigning here in neighboring Thailand and in some style, as we said, over seven seconds clear. And yet lifting that trophy. <laughs> Hopefully these will be some good smiling photos from the podium today. As you said, it's always a challenge to lift up everything. Imagine if you also had flowers as well. Here we go then. This was the journey to 25 points for Pratama, but it started with Danish versus Thompson into turn one. And it was Danish who took the early lead, but it wasn't to be for the Malaysian on Sunday. And instead it would be these two fighting it out for that second place, but the number seven making his way through to the race lead and then not looking back. There's a bit of heartbreak for Hamad Al Sahuti there, the number 23, who had a puncture and had to head back into pit lane. He's now fourth overall after he missed out on those points. And Veda Ega Fatama, the number seven in the middle of the screen, making that progress, fighting for those 25 points, and in doing so, also moving up in the standings ahead of Sepang. So once he was through, he didn't really look back. And it was an absolute masterclass from Pratama here at Buriram. Look at that gap. And then look at that gap as well between Thompson and Mie and then that chasing pack. Some really impressive performances in race two at Buriram and another classic fight for this group and a classic save from Raycat Fadilla. So here you go then, track limits just biting for Carter Thompson, but no such drama for our race winner. Seven seconds clear was Pratama, and the number six first of the line, demoted one position, but finally taking that podium and getting some better luck. And Shinya Izawa likewise fighting back on Sunday. Join us for more as we return at Sepang International Circuit for another nice hot weekend of Idemitsu Asia Talent Cup.